Hey, my friend, in this video, I'm going to compare the Strymon Big Sky with the new neighbor Illumin. You voted for it. Yes, on my community tab last week, I made a poll and the majority of you voted for this comparison. So there we go. And there are so many things to say and to test on these pedals. I'm not going to play through all of the modes, but I'm going to rank them through many different criteria like price, ease of use, variety of modes, sound quality, tweakability, etc. to see which pedal wins according to my criteria. So first of all, the price, they are exactly the same price, 479 US, which is very expensive for a guitar pedal, but those are supposed to be uh, solutions to all of your reverb needs and even more. So I think they're meant to be in the same ballpark and the same price. So it's equal here. Now let's talk ease of use. To me, the Strymon Big Sky wins on that. Uh, why? Because you have most of the knobs available right now. Uh, in front of you, you don't have to go inside the pedal too much. And then I like the option of just having bank up and bank down with the press of two knobs like this. Uh, the Illumin, it's still really user friendly in the sense that you can set it up so that when you press a long press, on the right foot switch, it turns the pedal on and off and then you can use the left and the right to cycle through uh, your presets right here. But it's when you want to change the parameters inside the pedal that it's a bit confusing uh, sometimes. Like you have only those two knobs right here. This one can cycle through the presets and then you got to remember, do I twist or do I <laughs> push on it? So I push on this one. Okay, I'm editing the name. That's not what I wanted. If, if I push on this one, oh, it's to save the preset. That's not what I wanted. And then when you twist it, you have some parameters, but if you want more of those parameters, you have to remember to go on the effect type and push again to get more of those. And I mean, you get used to it, uh, but to me, that could be more intuitive in some way right here, but you definitely get used to it. So to me, uh, the ease of use goes to the big sky. Of course, the big sky also has a push of a button that goes into some parameters that are inside, but most of them are mapped to the knobs here. So for me, it's more intuitive. So now let's talk about uh, the big beast here, the variety of modes, the sound quality, the tweakability of the pedals, and we're gonna play more. So the Big Sky has 12 different reverb types and the Illumin has 17, but it's because we, you have many different types, uh, many different versions of the wet algorithm on here. So as far as variety, I'm going to say they're equal because they all have the same room, hall, plate, spring, swell, bloom, shimmer modes that uh, most multi-reverb pedals have. But after that, what they add more is different. So on the Big Sky, you're going to get like, let's say the Coral mode, which I use uh, a lot of the times for my ambient swell. So like uh, voices inside the reverb, right? You have things like uh, reverse. Reverse reverbs that are really cool. Uh, so you have kind of these modes right here, but on the uh, Illumin, you have other modes that you quite don't have with the Big Sky. So for example, I could have something like Rumble that adds more low end. Or something like octave. So it's adding octave before the reverb. So it's not the same as a shimmer. Uh, you have echoes. 
So it's like adding a delay pedal. Right, so it adds delay to it. It has a detune mode, so it's like a chorus pedal. And many other modes like this. And the other ones I qu are quite similar to what the Big Sky can do. So I say that the Big Sky can stretch a little bit farther in, in terms of like voices inside the reverb, uh, reverse, uh, reverbs, but this one is like more traditional, like adding echoes, adding chorus, adding octaves. So it depends what you are looking for. So for me, the variety is uh, gonna be to both of them. I, I'm gonna give a point to both of them for the variety. Now let's talk about the sound quality. It's pretty similar, but I think I'm going to give a slight edge to the Lumen on this one. So for example, if we pick a very uh, standard plate sound, so I'm going to go to the plate on the Lumen also. So I'm going to go to my preset plate one on this one here. So for example, let's try uh, it on the Big Sky first. So with lots of modulation. So it sounds like this on the big sky and on the Illumin it sounds like this. So both are sounding very, very beautiful. So it all depends also on uh, the, the tweakability. How many parameters do you have access to to tweak the sound to your liking? So for example, uh, on the plate mode of the Big Sky, you have the tone knob, which can go really dark. <laughs> You have access to, let's say, the low end, so you could put less low end. Just sounds thinner like this. You have access to the size, is it small or large? You have one modulation knob here, so without modulation it sounds like this. It doesn't have any life in it, right? But you have only one knob. This knob controls the depth and also the kind of the rate of the modulation too. But no matter where you put it, it's always going to be kind of a sweet spot. Right, and on the Illumin, if we go inside of the parameters here, uh, you got the mix, the depth, the tone, like it, like we do on the Big Sky. So if I put the tone down, that's gonna sound like this. To me, there is more depth, even with the tone down. Let's put it back at 50%. And now that's where we go, the mod width, so we can uh, tell how deep we want the modulation here. So if I put it at 8%, it's not very wide, but if I put it at 100, it's huge, but it's still musical. And that's why, what I love about New Neighbor. It's very musical, even at extreme settings. So you 
don't have access to that fine tuning with the big sky because it's just one modulation knob. And if I go back on the effect here, I can uh, put uh, some modulation rate. So at, at what rate are we doing it? So it could be very, very slow. Or we could go faster. So that's too fast, but a sweet spot of one, 1 1.42, let's say. So I love that I can control that with the pedal right here. And like you saw, you have the pre-delay, you have some high pass filters and damping. So if we look only at this, um, I'm gonna put it back here. If we only look at this preset right here, we could say that the tweakability of the Illumin is better than the big sky, especially because of the modulation, damping, and maybe more control on the, the high pass filter and low pass filters. Uh, you still have the low end control on this one, but it's just one preset. For example, if we go on the shimmer mode, so this one on the shimmer mode on the big sky, I think I have more controls over this one. So the tone knob is gonna be uh, better than on the Illumin. I can control two different shifts. So this one is gonna be, let's say, an octave up and the shift two, I can put it off, but I could add more shifts and it can be any interval I want, which I cannot do on the Illumin. And then I can say if uh, the amount of shimmer, but the Illumin can do it too. I can say the mode, do I want it to be regenerative or from the input? So I don't think we can do that on the Illumin too. So we have more control on the shimmer. So on the big sky, it's gonna sound like this. Pretty intense here. That's a really big shimmer, but if I go on shimmer mode, for example, here on the Illumin, that's gonna sound like this. It has the kind of piercing sound that I like less from shimmer, and if we look inside the parameters here, you can see that you have the typical modulation, but then if you wanna look at the tone of it, you just have a high pass filter or a low pass filter. So if I put the low pass filter at the minimum, ah, that's even more piercing. So the lowest I can go is two, uh, 2K Hertz, but that's still too piercing for my taste. And if I compare on the big sky, for example, with the tone down, all the way down, it's gonna sound like this. It really removes the piercing sound that I don't like from shimmer reverbs. Right? So I think that because of that, I cannot say that the tweakability is gonna be better on the Illumin. I love to have more control on my modulations, but it depends on the reverb type. Some of them are better on the Big Sky, some of them are better on the Illumin. So it's kind of a draw between both of them for tweakability. Then sound quality, like I say, it's very, very similar if um, we compared, for example, on the, the plate mode, like, like we did last time, on the plate setting right here, that was very similar, like this, for example. compared to the big sky.
but I'm gonna give a slight edge to the Illumin. I think it's just a little bit deeper and you know it's been my opinion since many years, but to me the best reverb algorithms are from New Neighbor for ambient guitar. The Strymans are very, very close, but I'm gonna give it to the Illumin, especially because we have access to the wet stereo uh, the, the wet algorithm, which the Strymon <laughs> doesn't have, of course, because it's from New Neighbor, but those are the best ones. I mean, just to cycle through it, let's say I, I'm just gonna go through the version one, version three, and the plugin version, and when I play through that, it's instant inspiration to me. I just love those. <laughs> I love the, can, I can have access to the version one, which is so warm and uh, we, I didn't get it from the Immers, the, the warmth of the version one, and now I have access to it. And then the version three from the Immers has different qualities, but it's as, just as good in another way. <laughs> And you even have access to the uh, the wet plugin version, which could work even better for other instruments than guitar. They're all very similar in a sense. I'm always inspired when I play through the wet algorithm. So all of that is to say slight, slight edge to the Illumin for the sound quality. And maybe you have a different opinion on it. And then the rest really depends on the extras of the pedal. They all have expressions input and lots of things you can do with expressions pedal, MIDI, uh, different bypass modes that you can use, buffer, true bypass, um, does the, like for example, does the, the preset continue when you turn off the pedal? Like here it does, you can control that on both pedals, you have an editor that you can use with both, uh, but I'm gonna give an edge to the Strymon Big Sky because What's unique to the Illumin, I think that the Big Sky doesn't have, is it has a noise reduction function inside the pedal, which is cool, but I haven't really uh, heard a difference between both of them. Like the Big Sky is not noisy at all. So uh, I don't have much use for it, but the Big Sky has a cab filter function on the back of the pedal, cab simulator which is really, really cool. Uh, you can click on the upper card if you want to catch my full demo on it, but the Illumin doesn't have that. And for the same exact price with as almost the same number of presets, almost the same tweakability, also almost the same sound quality, I think that having a cab filter extra on this for the same price uh, makes it uh, get the point for the extras uh, section. Also for the storage and presets, the Big Sky wins too because you can store up to 300 presets on this one. So you have 100 banks and you can put uh, the preset A, B and C. Uh, on the Illumin, you have 50 uh, user presets. So you have also the factory presets that stay here, you cannot change them. I don't believe you can do, you can start from them and then store them on the user presets. 
And then you have 50 of them that you can store here. I mean, it's more than enough for me to store 50 presets. I won't need more, but uh, the Big Sky still has more. Uh, in With the Illumin, you still have uh, the A and B side. So you could say that you in fact have 100 presets because if you hold this one right here, that's going to toggle between the, the settings A and settings B on the same type of reverb. So if you want to switch from one to the other on the same preset, you could do it. So in fact, it's like having a hundred presets, but you have the limitation of having the same type of reverb on the same preset if you want to toggle between A and B. So for example, if we want to hear how that changes here, so that's a swell type of reverb. So now that's a very, very subtle type. But I, I guess it's cool to make them like appear and you can even um, decide how, the, how fast it's gonna be the transition between preset A and B. So that's cool and that's quite unique on the Illumin. So I guess that's a, a big overview on what each pedal can do. So if we recap a little bit, you're gonna choose the Big Sky if the ease of use is important for you, that to have most knobs in front of you, to change presets really easily like this. Uh, if you want great sound quality, lots of tweakability, uh, it's gonna be a great pedal for you. If you want the extra of the cab filter and more storage and presets. And you can choose the new neighbor a lumen if you want a great variety of sounds like uh, having some echoes and choruses and octaves on top of your sound that could even replace some of your other pedals like delays and uh, and uh, uh, I, I was about to say reverb but I wanted to say modulation and chorus and things like these it could replace them uh, if you love the wet type of algorithm, you have access to all versions of, on it, which is really, really great. If the size of the pedal is important and the pedal board real estate and you want to use less power, so you could use a, a regular power supply and it takes uh, less space on your pedal board. So that's pretty much it, but you cannot go wrong with either of them. Those are wonderful reverb pedals. I think the next question for me is, will the Illumin replace the Big Sky on my pedal board? Only time will tell. It's very tempting. I love that I can have more control on the modulation and access to more of the wet algorithm versions, but at the same time, I'm using the corral mode a lot on the Big Sky for my swells, and I would lose it, and the, some reverse reverb sometimes that I would not get with this one. So they both have things that I like and things that I would miss if I change from one or another, so I might swap them from time to time. So thank you very much for watching. And like always, you have my free course, first link in the description box if you wanna learn about ambient guitar. It's called A Beginner's Guide to Ambient Guitar. It's a free course on my website. 45 minutes of video lessons. I'm uh, showing you how you can get started and looping and uh, crafting your sounds to make your first ambient guitar songs. So you can get that and you can subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I have many guitar lessons and tutorials and demos and original music on a weekly basis. And I'm gonna see you uh, very, very soon. Thanks for watching and until next time, au revoir. <laughs>